take the plunge. Uh, it's it's okay. The first year will be will be chaotic. It it will seem that nothing is going right and and everything goes wrong in the beginning. That's that's fine. Don't stress. I underestimated just the sheer amount of joy you you get. You know with with playing with your kids. Hey. Hey guys, I'm Young, a full-time dad and a full-time professional with the goal to become the best parent possible. The Girl Dad Show is my journey interviewing fellow working parents aspiring to be both good at work and parenting. I'm going to do this by gathering and sharing unfiltered perspectives from my guests. So join me as I research parenthood one interview at a time. Gottwig, thank you so much for joining me on my show today. Yes, thank you for having me. I know it took some time for us to get started on this. Yeah, it, it always takes time to schedule for uh, podcasting. It's so hard to take uh, an hour out of your day these days, right? I feel like everyone's gotten so busy over the course of the last few years with everything happening. Um, uh, but I'm glad that we made it work. We're here. It's so awesome. Yeah. And I love the way that we met and the way that we got onto this uh, show together because I'm really, really excited about what you're building. So let's just jump right into it. Why don't you tell all the listeners what you do for a living? So hi, everybody. I'm Satwek. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of EvaBot. EvaBot is a service that helps companies automate their gifting programs uh, and it enables them to, you know, send out bespoke tailored gifts uh, to each person's personality and taste without having to like, you know, actually spend all the time trying to do this manually. So you get the best of automation with, you know, really deep personalization. Imagine that if you had to send out a thousand gifts tomorrow morning, a, there's like no practical way of doing that. And if then you had to do that, each person should be getting something different, something which is right for them. That's like practically impossible. Like in no way that's that's doable. That's what EVA, uh, EVA enables for you. Uh, and that's what you're building. Yeah, it's an awesome product. I mean, I, I love that we met uh, because I became a client of yours. I um, received an EVA bought gift through a, through a, a uh, colleague and a, uh, I guess a partner partner business and um, the experience was just so good. <laughs> I loved it. I loved the experience so much that I had to like research you and then I uh, pinged you and then it was really fun to get to meet you uh, during that process and then connect this way and then finding out that you're also a dad and that you're building this really cool business and you're um, growing it and stuff. But do you do you mind sharing what it is that you do for EvaBot? You're a co-founder, but you also have a function, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I look after all of growth, uh, marketing, uh, growth and marketing. So, you know, essentially anything which is related to revenue, whether it is marketing, sales, uh, you know, our GTM motions, uh, for now, even our customer success. So I lead awesome. all those three things. Yeah, so just some stuff. Yeah, no big deal, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think being a founder and a builder, you end up having to do so much, right? It's like you can't even like... Uh, articulate it or explain it fully until people actually start their own business. But it feels like um, you end up being a jack of all trades, whether or not you want to or not, right? Exactly. And getting right. titles is hard. <laughs> it really is. Are there um, some big projects that you're working on right now at EvaBot? Yes. Uh, so each year, you know, uh, we take up new priorities on, on what are the things that we want to, uh, you know, new stuff you want to add. Uh, so for us, like this year, uh, right in the beginning, we added a video review feature. So, and we've been dog fooding it aggressively. And uh, so now we always could help, uh, you know, customers when they're sending out a gift to also, you know, collect a review, get that posted to, you know, Google, G2, other places. Uh, we've added an interesting angle to collect video reviews uh, there. Uh, so we're just rolling this out. We're rolling out some social, you know, sharing automatically for other platforms as well. Uh, so that's one part. Uh, we are also, uh, you know, working on leveraging our our AI engine to take all this data we collect, all the opt-in permission-based data we collect on preferences and tastes, and use that plus GTP three to also, you know, help you write the better handwritten note for the for the gift or the email that you want to write along with it. So we can bring all of that together. Uh, you know, taking it beyond just the actual gift part of it. So those are like two major projects we are working on right now, along with, of course, ramping up sales and marketing and all of that. Oh my gosh, I love it. I um, am very excited to hear that selfishly because uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I am a customer of yours now. And so I finally got around to sending my first gift and it was so, yeah. 
it was so painless. It was amazing. It was just like uh, normally gift giving is like um, it's not it's not a big deal, right? It's like you know obviously you want to you know do a good job and you want to like organize it, but it ends up being logistically um, time consuming. And just to be able to go click 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 boom and then have it be customized to that person was just so so amazing. It was such an amazing experience. And then I'm really excited to see what the person thinks because they're going to get that custom gift that I got. Uh, when I was given the gift at Eva, so it's very cool to see the video aspect because I think the video, um, the video referral or the video testimonial thing that you can collect would be so powerful for businesses that have high gift giving or relationship building as part of their strategy. I, I do have to ask, um, given that it's a parenting podcast, tell me about your kids. H how old are they, and, and how many do you have? I have one kid. Uh... As the show says, girl dad. So, so you know, I am a girl dad. Oh, you're a girl dad uh, too. Awesome. Uh, Very uh, good. And she's five now, uh, like just turned five a few months back uh, and just started her, you know, this year, her uh, TK uh, here. That's awesome. I, um, I actually have a five-year-old girl as well. So we share a lot more similar. Yeah, we have a lot more similarities than I even realized. That's awesome. In the stages, right? Oh yeah, it's crazy. I I can't I can't believe it. Uh, I I personally wanted a boy. Um, I was really hoping for a boy, and I got two girls instead. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love them to death. It's so lucky much fun. you. I always wanted a girl. Oh, you did. You always wanted a girl, really? Oh, it's funny. Yes. Yeah, it's great. Um, when did you start EvaBot? So we got started with Eva. You know, as all good startups too it was a we started off with a very different idea uh, we, when we were back in india around 5 years back uh, you know late 2015 early 2016 uh, rabi my other co-founder uh, ashi shakshay my other you know three co-founders they had a previous company uh, in india uh, they were working on second screen technology for you know a lot of large tv channels they had just sold that uh, that business uh, that startup and they were you know, we were jamming on this other idea of something like P2P video sharing in the in the family context. Mm. Uh, and we were getting some interesting feedback on it. And, you know, somebody told us, hey, why don't you guys go to Silicon Valley and get feedback there? That's the real market. That's the hardest one. That's where you get all the competition. So we said, okay, let's, let's try that. And we just, you know, thankfully we had our B1 visas, uh, from you know work previously yeah. so we could just like come in here but the challenge was once we landed here we knew nobody like we literally yeah. just had the Airbnb app and the meetup app to meet people so our first challenge is okay we left our networks behind how do we rebuild them here and we, we don't have like 10 years to do that now wow. so that's where we started thinking of okay what are the different things we can try and gifting was one of the ideas we thought okay this is something we can try out uh the challenge was that we had no cultural context we bombed at it <laughs> we tried on our own so you know being being engineers and 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 you know founders we said okay actually let's build something to help us there uh and we built the first sms bot to kind of play around uh you know uh and people just assumed that it was uh, you know, a bot, even though there's, you know, very basic, like, you know, responses going out on, on text messaging at that time. And very soon people were asking us more questions about that than, than the original idea we had. People had a lot more interest in that experience. So that's how, like, around five years back, we got started with Eva. Oh my gosh, that's the origin story? That's amazing. <laughs> so really? if you guys completely shelved the other peer-to-peer -peer video project, or now you're able to bring some of that back with this new video referral thing? Yeah, 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 we have the features, so we, we'll, we'll keep That's bringing awesome. some, some elements. <laughs> Satwick, I do have to ask, though, because the timing kind of makes me um, very curious. It sounds like you had your daughter the same time you started this business and moved. Yes, I had the best timing in the world. You could, oh, yeah, it sounds really, sounds really crazy. What, so you, did you move, did you decide to move here first and then you had your kid here? Or did you have your kid and then decide to start a business and move here? Because those are three major things that people don't combine. Moving to a new country, starting a business, and having a kid, right? What is the secret? And I combine, <laughs> and I combine all three of them <laughs> instantly. You do. So, no regrets. I mean, now no regrets. <laughs> Looking back at <laughs> in that moment, that was really tough. I bet. Uh, I mean, it it happened. I mean, as a I mean, not as fully planned. The this this sequence. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we were. 
thinking of having a kid and uh, you know simultaneously by the time you were thinking about you know uh, working on the startup but we had not yet thought about like changing countries or moving accordingly and then both the things just suddenly happened together uh, you know both the you know sara my my kid and and you know jumping ship to 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 the startup and then when the whole thing came about okay let's you know try this in the us that's the right market to get feedback uh <laughs> that kind of added on so the beginning was really tough because you know my kid was born in india i was here for like 3 4 months in between uh, uh during the pregnancy then i had to get rush back and at that time we were on b2 b1 visa so you know there were other complications right. in terms of travel and stuff uh so once we you know we had switched the idea to to eva uh, and we had got uh, we had got accepted to boost vc the accelerator in san mateo that's when we applied for our you know o1 visas and then we could finally move so around august 2017 we all kind of you know i my family moved here uh, ravi had moved here you know beforehand oh wow so you just kind of like went with the flow it was like hey this opportunity came up you're going to go for it yep. even though you had a kid you're just like we're going to do it it's just going to happen you just you just kind of like went with it mm-hmm. Just took the plunge. Yeah. Sure, there wasn't more fighting involved. It's as you just like went with it. Or... Uh, <laughs> my my wife was like, "There's no way I could have done this without her support." Right. Yeah, she. Right. It was so difficult in the in the beginning. I mean, even when we got here, like you know, I and Ravi, uh, we had just like raised a very tiny amount of money at that time, so we were all living together in a single house with like. The the garage being the 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 storage and the and the setup for the for the company. Oh wow! I love this story even more. That's amazing. So you you guys were really risking a lot, huge risk. Yeah, yeah. Like, yep, yep, yep. Oh man, went all this in. Is amazing. That's fantastic. I, I I love that origin story. Thanks for sharing, and then thanks for sharing how how uh, um how you did all three of those things at the same time. Did you um did you how did you grow up? Did you grow up with an entrepreneurial family, or, or were they risk takers? And so you kind of picked that up, or where, where, how did you grow up? What was your childhood like? so yeah i mean partly risk takers but like my dad was uh, you know is was working in you know, was an army officer in india back in india so you know growing up was in one way like fun because we were never kind of stationed in one place he kept moving around the country and like we were you know moving from city to city after like living there for a few years uh, so yeah but he had a streak of uh, you know taking risks and uh, you know trying out new things which i think i i got uh, as well also because we were kind of you know moving to new places constantly so that you know habit of figuring out things in a new place or like resetting quickly uh that got built uh pretty early on uh it was a very interesting i mean childhood because uh a the the army uh, and the military you know uh, environment was so different there was also like close knit uh uh connections because of that uh because we were all like families who were like moving around the country so you didn't have like a set of fixed friends so everybody learned to do this quickly uh the great part was we could uh see so many different places get you know see so many different cultures as you know india is a country of different languages and different like food and everything changes you know in 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 just short proximity and we were like literally going to different regions of the of the, of the country so in one way it was really fun uh, to to get exposed to all these different cultures and ideas and how you know different parts of the country and different parts you know people have very different opinions or very different approaches to same you know similar situations uh the challenge was of course <laughs> not having permanent friends because like till then i got to college uh, rabi my co-founder I, i i met in college till then there were like no set of permanent friends uh so that was the, the 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 downside of it but but overall it was really interesting because we could play so many different sports and you know uh check out so many different experiences which otherwise would have been much more difficult yeah, to do and also just the skills that you learn from moving and transitioning so much i mean there's a lot of benefit to that right that you're not even talking about as in like your personal growth and the environment that you're growing up in i grew i moved a lot as a child as well too my dad my dad was an entrepreneur and so he uh, moved us around quite a bit growing up 
Yeah, oh. and so um, I think the biggest benefit of that is that like you 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 learn to be a lot more. I mean, I don't real I didn't realize it back then. I used to just get annoyed, you know, because I'd have to change, make new friends every time. But yep. you know, now that I'm older and wiser, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I um, I'm looking back and realizing that that really helped me be more adaptive too. So not only did I, you know, mo oh, much more yep. open to experiencing yep. and much more open to trying new things and and, and to a, to a certain degree a lot more risk tolerant. Do you feel the same way? Definitely. I think the, the plunge I took to like move right. countries in, in, in situation I did, that would not have happened if I didn't have that conditioning somewhere, you know, yeah. uh, built in. It was, yeah, fine, we, we'll figure it out. We'll go to a new yeah. place and, and, and figure it out. Uh, and yeah, that inherent risk taker, you know, uh, taking ability gets built in How as well. are you well. doing that with your uh, daughter? Are you um, trying, to, trying, to, trying to encapsulate her in that same kind of environment or ecosystem? Or are you going to do something different for her than you had? So trying to do like best of both yeah. the worlds in some way. Uh, I mean, unlike unlike previously, we're not moving yeah. that much. <laughs> so so she's not getting yeah. that part of it. Uh, but yeah, what we're doing is, you know, uh, she's a feisty little one who's who's getting her, you know, good strong opinions of her yeah. own. Uh, loves to take charge and do her own things and really focused on let me make my own decisions yeah. already on every small thing. So that's one thing you're working on, you know, how to inculcate that decision making ability in her so that she's always taking her own decisions, even if that means in the short term, <laughs> she doesn't listen to us on certain things, uh, helping her understand, like, how do you make decisions? What the pro and cons are, you know, you, you may want to get all the candy right now, but then, you know, there's a, there's a trade off to that. Uh, the the other thing we are doing is like we travel quite a bit so like whenever possible with the you know long weekends we'll take her out to different places different parts of the country nice. so that she can start you know uh, getting that exposure Very that we smart. had and then has she gone back to india at all or have you done that trip with the young kid you've done one trip uh, we're planning another one this year covid came in between so international travel was really right. complicated especially right. between india and us so like last two years we've not been able to uh, but yeah, thankfully we got like one trip just at the beginning of COVID, uh, just when it was beginning in like 2020, yeah. February, we had just come back from India. Uh, she do? so she was yeah. like, what, two and a half, two, two and a half years old. Like she was young. That was a long flight, yeah, right? I mean, yeah. that's hard for adults. I can't even <laughs> imagine for a toddler, you know, how that went. Was she okay? The worst part was I at the last minute couldn't make it, uh, because a lot of stuff came up wow. here and I got struck here. And then they had to oh go alone. <laughs> so uh, the only good thing was it was an overnight flight. So she slept for a big chunk of it. She was tired. Uh, but yeah, once she it woke up, <laughs> there were a lot of walks on the plane. That's amazing. So that's cool. So you're doing a lot of, um, you're, you're stabilizing the location move that you had, but you're actually trying to incorporate a lot more activities and experiences. Yes. That's great. Does she, does she yes. understand what you do for yes. work? Does she understand what you're building? What does she think you do for a living? So she's she's caught on to the part that mm. I'm a co-founder. Oh, so she understands the entrepreneurial <laughs> thing. Okay. Yeah. And and that we help Santa Claus. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. That's a really great way to explain your uh, so, your business. Um, you got to put that on your pitch decks. You know what I mean? Like, hey, this is <laughs> this is what we do. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. So, uh, hey, kids get gifts directly from Santa Claus, but, you know, somebody has to do it for adults and Santa Claus yeah. doesn't have the time. It's so, actually a so pretty good get, example, yeah. actually. I give her I give her um, a lot of kudos for coming up with that because the technically you customize it, too. And like you're customizing it. So it's actually yeah. like really, really good gift giving. She's yeah, she's made to be a, an entrepreneur or at least a marketer. Right. So here we go. We got her. We got her going. Very good. So, um, yeah. what does success look like for you as a parent? Good question. Yeah. Hard, hard Very answers, hard I think. <laughs> you know, you know, like a single thing. But for, I mean, for me, uh, you know, one thing, and I, I wanted to ensure that you know, she, she learns early on is definitely decision making because that is something we've seen. Even I took some time because you know, you, you live sheltered lives. Parents are really, you know, there to take care of things. And you don't necessarily build the, the the mental muscle and the comfort to, you know, take hard decisions. And most importantly, you know, 
be okay with a trade off sometimes uh so like that's one thing we consciously try and do uh where she's able to try something out take a decision and she learns that okay it's it's okay to live with a trade off when you when you're thinking of it and i mean she's small so <laughs> Uh, her window of thinking about trade offs is not more than a few like 15 20 minutes uh anything longer than that doesn't really register that well but yeah she's like beginning to learn that uh so that's that's one very important thing that you know we we wanted to ensure as parents for her uh second is you know uh definitely we, the something we benefited from as kids by moving around and you know getting exposed to different cultures different point of views so she understands that you know there's no one way of thinking about things there is you know there are so many different views of you know how you look at a problem or how you look at a situation uh how to build that confidence in her that she's able to navigate that uh while taking her own decisions that's like one of the most important things we we want to ensure oh, for her i love it you're talking more like systems building almost like values building like giving her the information to like understand points of view and broadening her horizon that's a really clever way of to finding success. I love that, man. And then how about for business? What what are your uh what are your business successes and goals? Yeah, I mean, this this year is a very yeah. interesting milestone for us, you know, uh we'll have more formal communication coming out soon, but uh this is the time when we're like, you know, scaling up significantly uh in our startup journey. I mean, this is the time when, you know, we've got to a place where we have solid product market fit we have the basic teams now in place which we didn't have in, even till last year where it was mostly just us doing different things so like this year for us the challenge now is you know how do you make that transition from doing things yourself and you know constantly doing them on your own to which is sometimes hard to like letting go of it and working on building that process and that and that system which others can use comfortably easily right. and that's the only way we can scale so that transition of giving up on actually doing those things which which you love and you know you have always done to taking a step back and figuring out how do you help the the processes and system scale up uh, and how do you enable you know all the wonderful folks we are hiring to to take up and and run with it uh, and you know enable yeah, stuff for them that's a hard that's a hard nut man i will tell you that's probably the biggest hardship most businesses struggle with and I'm very very keenly aware of it. Um yeah. it's it's you know the the space that I like to live in mostly and so it's really great to hear that you guys are wrestling with that aspect of it. It's like um uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable because it's to a certain degree you get so good at what you do and you probably do it the best and then having to cross train other people and and letting other people do it you know and they're never going to do it exactly the way you do it. In some ways they could do it better but the reality is you have to exactly. learn how to let go because you'll never scale if you don't there's just so much bandwidth that you can do yourself until you let yep. it go and so it's a very tricky balance and i i definitely don't um uh, think that it's a, a, a an easy task but it's a really really exciting goals and objectives if i asked you what you think is harder your uh, parenting goals or your business goals what would you say uh, parenting goals man <laughs> tell me why <laughs> tell me why i mean uh, a you know that in in business you can you can go back and fix things yeah. <laughs> that's doable so if a team gets got goes wrong you can you can fire folks or you can train them again or you can rework it yeah. Yeah. you don't get a second pass at you know i love that okay <laughs> so so yeah that phase plus uh, i think like right now also like the the balancing act between between family and as we do this uh, you know as we scale that that gets Uh, i i always thought that that got easier which i'm now realizing it actually doesn't it it keeps getting more trickier the balance becomes more trickier as you go along because now that you know uh, she is bigger she she wants you know she, she wants different kinds of engagement not just a thing uh so she wants attention in different ways she wants to understand things there's more to do with her but there's also lots to do to hear uh and the, you can you can throw more resources at it on the on the business side so you can have more teams more stuff but will on the parenting side it's, it's the two of yeah, you no matter what you're looking at it you're thinking about it very pragmatically and logically but you're right it's absolutely true the stakes are much higher there's there's no there's no like really no redoing <laughs> right like there's no other um you can't like return the kid and get it back you know <laughs> like yeah you got what you have <laughs> 
Okay, let's let's redo re right, let's right. restart at yeah. three again. Exactly. Let's fix That's this. That's a really good way of looking at it. <laughs> Hey, um, so Satwik, let me actually uh, jump over to some of these um, rapid fire questions I want to ask every single guest, okay? Awesome. All right, sounds good. So what I want to do is um, ask you a couple questions that I'm going to ask every single guest so that there's some symmetry to the podcast. So I'll jump right into the first one. Uh, what advice do you have for other parents and soon-to-be parents? Take the plunge. Uh, it's it's okay. The first year will be will be chaotic. It it will seem that nothing is going right and and everything goes wrong in the beginning. That's that's fine. Don't stress. Uh, you know, go with the flow. Uh, first first year is is bound to be like that. It gets better. Uh, also, in the in the beginning, you do need to just spend like as much time as possible with a kid. I mean that that makes that made a huge difference uh, like to that. to us. Those are really good pieces of advice. And I actually, in hindsight, I actually agree with that advice because I feel like I should have started sooner too. I don't know what I was waiting for. I was waiting for the perfect time, the right amount of money, the right amount of this. But it's like you would have just figured yeah. it out, you know. And, and you're a walking example of it. You just like started a business and you moved to a new country, probably one of the most expensive countries <laughs> in the world, one of the most expensive locations in the country in the world. Yeah. And so you're figuring it out as you go, and yep. you're still happy and fine. So it kind of goes into the idea that you just have to like. There's no, there's no time that you're really ready, ready, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can logically like, uh, like exist, pick a perfect right. time and that doesn't they exist. Their own, so they they want to do whatever they want anyway. So yeah, you can't even plan that anyways. All right. Next yeah. question. So if you could True go back that. and tell yourself one thing before having kids, what would you tell yourself? Hmm, that's a good one. The the one thing I would tell myself is increase your patience level. <laughs> work work on your patience level uh because what i've seen with her is even the the hardest you know uh, tantrums or everything else if you just hold your patience and and just ride it out it gets so much more better than than trying to you know react to it much early or trying to fix it uh which i've seen usually doesn't work so that's something nice. i would i would tell that's myself really specifically i also um um, struggle with that. I think it's also the age of our kid, though, too. I think that they're <laughs> very, uh, very uh, much so ideating who they are and questioning everything. And so it's probably even harder right now for us just because we have that fight yeah. um, mentality kind of combating us. But you're absolutely right. I, I feel like I agree with that. My patience has been tested like crazy. Um, so uh, what's the most surprising thing that you've learned about yourself after becoming a parent? Hmm. I would say two two things. Uh, one was, as as you said, you know, in the beginning, when you're thinking about having a kid, it feels like, oh, how would that work out? Or or it'll it'll be really difficult. Or even with the startup, my I, you know initial thought was, oh, this this balancing will be like impossible, and you you can't do it. Uh, that I found surprising that how naturally that starts coming to you once you do have a kid, right. because well, there is no other alternative. So. You just kind of you you are able to like mentally reset and somehow you find you know more time you somehow find more productivity uh, where you you know where I thought I had none uh, that was you know that was generally uh, surprising uh, and second was I underestimated just the sheer amount of joy you you get you know with with playing with your kids I mean as much as you imagine it is in reality when you start doing it I mean it's like so much more yeah, that that was something which really surprised yeah, me very insightful i had the same experience too and i completely relate. <laughs> like you just don't realize how much you could love something until you have a kid and you're like oh wow like there's a lot more in there than i realized yeah it's really fascinating uh very cool so right, do you right. uh, so do you have a favorite business book or favorite book uh i would say favorite business book would be uh blue ocean strategy I, I I read it first time. I was like in college, and it like blew my mind. That oh, that's a completely different way of you know looking at stuff uh, on the business side. Uh, may, my favorite book would be on the nonfiction side would be would be uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. Uh, again, that was like a revelation of, especially the live examples the author gives there uh, on on you know on your mm -hmm. preset mind and and your you know. Uh, deliberate mind on the fiction side I, I love historical fiction so uh, I'm a sucker for Mughal history so there's a whole series of books written by Alex Rutherford which is like fictional uh, 
fictionalized reality, uh, you know, actual actual uh, events just fictionalized uh, across the Mughal emperors, uh, you know, uh, almost over nice. like 500 years. That's the book I love. I, I've heard the one of them, the Blue Ocean Strategies, um, but I haven't heard the other two. That's great. And then um, when you're not building the next big um, um, tech software company or gift giving platform and you're not being a super dad, what does Satwik do for fun? What's your what's your hobbies and downtime activities? I love uh, a listening to some music while like reading. Uh, these days, I'm it got switched. So like to get more time to read, what I've done is like <laughs> I've made it a multimedia activity. So each book I buy as a ebook, physical book, and an audio book. So I can switch nice. between mediums depending on the activity I'm doing uh, and kind of go through them faster. Uh, so that's something I I, I love doing. Uh, I I love doing. I love cooking. Uh, so, uh, you know, I I I love interesting food. Uh, you know, eating it, making it. So so that's something I try and do on the on the weekend. It's it's a fun activity. I I involve Sarah sometimes, uh, or I'll check out what what she wants that's to awesome. eat, and we can like experiment and try yeah, something out. I love out. cooking too, and I feel like the kids also get love getting involved, right? I feel like. Right now, it's like all of those things are so interesting and, and yeah. so great that you can do that. We love you. it. Um, Satwik, thank you so much for being on my podcast and sharing a little bit about your journey. I really, really appreciate the time. Same here. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. And I'll, and I'll keep telling you how I like the product and how, as I go through it. Uh, I'm really, really excited to see where you guys take the next step. Yes. That's a great, that's a great part. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Girl Dad Show. We really hope you enjoyed that interview. And as always, please take a moment to review, rate, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.